Hello everybody and welcome back to Chris Bosch Props. We are on to a couple new projects. One of the projects I wanted to share with you guys today is we are going to be returning to the RoboCop suit. And you guys might be asking why are you going back to the RoboCop suit? You've already done it. Well, it's true. I've already done it, but I still have not been able to wear it at a Comic-Con. And because of that, I had this suit sitting in a tote for months now. This was going to be kind of like a stunt suit, a throwaway suit perhaps, that I can wear at Comic-Con so that I don't damage the finished, shoot, finished suit that you guys have seen in my previous videos. So what we're going to do is, as you can see, it's a mess. This is all the armor pieces. I don't have to do the midsection because I already have a mold for that and I want a soft midsection because I want to be able to move. So this is all the armor pieces, the legs, the calves, the feet, the chest, the back, the arms, etc. I also already have molds for the gloves, gloves as you guys have seen and I'll probably just be using the castings that I already did. And the big plan, the big goal is if we can make this happen, is I want to be able to wear the suit at Orlando Comic-Con. It's a dream of mine to wear the RoboCop suit at a Comic-Con, and every time I get close, something happens. It just fails. For instance, at the last Dallas Comic-Con, it was over 100 degrees weather, so I would have been dying in the suit, and we had some parking issues or some assigned parking that we had to make it easier to put the suit on was not granted for whatever reason. So that just didn't happen, and... This time, we're going to make it happen. So Orlando Megacon is in March of next year, which is roughly, what, six months away, give or take. Um, that should be plenty of time to get this suit done and share with you guys, go into even more detail of how I'm going to do everything, how I glue everything, etc. And it should be fun. I'm actually really excited. I'm not going to go as crazy on this suit as I did um, with the suit that I have in my game room. We're going to make this just decent enough to wear, be comfortable in, uh, probably work on some maneuverability mistakes that I did on the previous suit, make this a little bit more nice to wear, comfortable, and be able to get through a day at Orlando Megacon. I'm pumped. I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. Um, we're going to do this again, another journey. So thank you for watching and I'll keep you updated. Thank you. So as you can see guys, there is a lot of pieces to this suit. What I want to do is kind of like a layout, see what I got, see where I'm at, and kind of show you guys how I cut all these pieces up. Now the way I cut this up is the exact same way that the previous suit was cut up. So some of you guys that might be doing the same files or making a RoboCop suit, you can kind of get an idea of how you need to cut up the parts for um, whatever bed you're probably using. Uh, most of you are probably using CR10s or something of the, of the sort or an Ender 3. Uh, some of these parts may be a little bit too big for an Ender 3, but nonetheless, it'll just give you kind of an idea of how I do it. So it's kind of hard to just take one part out. So we're going to do this that way. So give me just a second and I'm going to kind of organize this and lay it out and show you guys. We are back. And I went through the work of getting everything laid out for you guys and see that if you're doing this project, this is pretty much what you're going to start with. Now this can get you really discouraged, I understand. It's a lot of pieces that need to be put together. It's pretty much like a model kit. And the reason we have to cut so many of these pieces up is because we can't fit a whole entire RoboCop chest on an Ender 3 or even a CR-10 which is a much larger bed we still can't fit the whole chest piece so because of that we have to cut everything up into multiple pieces to make the calibration process easier for us um, we also print in multiple pieces so that uh, we use less supports and save material. 
but it does create more work in having to fuse all of these together. So I just kind of wanted to do a rundown because some of you might be starting on this project and this is pretty much what it's going to look like. The helmet was pretty easy. I printed the helmet, the dome, all in one piece. But there is multiple parts. For instance, this back piece right here with the vents and the plug-in. This whole plate right here is separate from the dome. But I already had it glued in. And it's already got a coat of filler primer on it. We also have this back chin guard piece. And then the main chin guard. So that's it pretty much for the helmet. Now some of the soft pieces I already have finished, like the midsection and the neck piece. These are already done, so that's gonna save me a lot of time of having to come and mess with these. Um, if you are building this suit, I would highly recommend if you can and you're good enough to print the neck piece in TPU. That'll just help give you some more mobility. That's the main reason why I printed the neck piece in your, uh, I'm sorry, that's the main reason I molded the neck piece in silicone and cast it in urethane. Just give me more um, maneuverability with my neck because it's really hard to move in this suit. Even with the best modifications, it's just, it's really hard. So I'm learning. Uh, hopefully when this suit's done, I can get some more practice and move around better. The midsection, which is a huge portion of the suit, that takes a lot of work in and of itself if you are printing it. Um, I originally printed this into multiple pieces, um, but this is the soft midsection that I casted in urethane foam rubber. That's what I'll be using. I don't have a urethane piece in the display room. Um, the midsection I have displayed with that suit is just the hard midsection that I built with the PLA. So that's what I'll be using. That's going to save a lot of time. But here's the chest piece. That's cut up in about eight pieces, as you can see. And that all has to be glued together. There's little uh, trinkets that have to be added in. The arm pieces are cut up into four pieces. Still a lot of supports on these. I got to get cleaned up. And the gloves, as you guys have seen in my previous videos, I've already made a mold of those, which is up there. And I already have these castings of the Robocop gloves. These were casted in urethane and they're wearable so these are ready to go I ain't got to spend a whole lot of time on the gloves these take quite a while to get done also and they're ready to go so that's gonna save us a lot of time also and they, these are just awesome they just look so good Asin if you're watching just thank you man for doing this for me these gloves are incredible they're so detailed they look like they just jumped right out of the screen you 3D modelers are just so talented, I'm telling you. Amazing. And this bicep right here, uh, there's a lot of little extra pieces that you're going to have when it comes to this suit. This has to be glued on, and I have some bags of some other small pieces that uh, have to be glued on throughout the suit. Um, that is some extra work, but it's okay. Um, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, you're going to have a lot of little extra pieces like that. Here's the, the elbow forearm piece. That I printed all as one piece. So this wasn't cut up. This is just a separate piece. The supports have to be removed and I have to glue it in. Here's the legs. Those are cut up into six pieces. And then the calves, I cut up into one, two, three, four, five pieces. The, the feet, which are two separate pieces just as the model comes, I just printed those out whole. Those didn't have to be cut up at all. And here's the shins. I guess I printed, yeah, I printed the shins all in one piece. I guess that would fit easily on an Ender 3. Yeah, that would fit on an Ender 3, no problem. You could print that all as one piece. Kind of the way I cut it, I'm sure most of these pieces can be printed on an Ender 3.
So yeah, guys, so that's what we're starting with. <laughs> it's going to be uh, a long project, but definitely not as long as the last one. Like I said, I'm not going to go crazy on this. There probably will be many print lines noticeable, but it'll be nice enough to be able to wear at a Comic-Con and not worry about messing it up, just having fun, being able to show it off. It's such a great suit. It just it looks like the movie suit. It doesn't look like a homemade suit, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's amazing homemade suits, but there's just something about the presence of this suit. It just looks like it came straight out of the movie once it's finished. So guys, if this is where you're at, this is where you're starting, don't be discouraged. As you've seen in my previous Robocop videos, it is possible. Just stick with it. Be patient. Don't try to rush. It, it takes time. It takes a lot of time. But with effort, persistence, even stubbornness, it can be done. So the next video, I'm going to show you guys how I fuse all these together. I'm not a PLA welder guy. I, I'm not a fan of it. And it's just because I'm not saying it's, it's a bad technique. It's a great technique. It just takes forever. I, I have a really good super glue I use and I like to super glue everything, which does take time also, but not as long as PLA welding. And yeah, we'll start getting a lot of these pieces super glued together and uh, we'll do a refresher of how I do it on the next one. So thank you guys. I hope you're excited as I am, and I cannot wait to be able to wear this at Orlando Megacon, which is a huge Comic-Con, uh, tons of innovative and amazing cosplay that goes on there, and I'm just thrilled to, to possibly be able to be a part of it. So root me on, guys, push me, help me to get this done, and let's go. Let's do it. All right, guys. Thank you.